Greetings, Mac Jocks. It is I, Shrapnel, here with another tale of Battletech. But before we get into it, I want to give a shout out to my buddy Adam at DreamMade Productions. Adam has been a true Mac Jock for many years. He's incredibly knowledgeable, friendly, and just lives Battletech. You can tell this by the love he puts into his regularly produced fantastic lore and narrative battle reports, which are great, by the way. He's got a great easy listening voice and a great ear for atmospheric music to help soak up all that big brain stuff or watch the Capellans get stomped. So, if you want to learn something you never knew you needed to know or simply want to see your favourite side be triumphant, then head on over to his channel and give him some love. And now, without further ado, it's on to the main show. Wolf on the Mountain by Fedra M. Weldon from Battletech Total Warfare 9th Edition Read by Shrapnel New Hampshire City, Northern Outskirts, Orkney, 15 September 3069. The jagged side of the mountain betrayed her as she stepped to the left along the 90 degree slope with her linebacker prime. 180 meters away stood the enemy Hellbringer. Green, leathery, cactus shaped trees the size of mechs stood in clumps all around them. Towering sentinels to the chunks of crystalline formations that broke apart beneath the weight of her stumbling machine. Star Commander Shayla of Striker Star Kappa Alpha powered back her linebackers offensive as the ground gave way. The 65 ton mech skittered downward several meters, sending up dust, rocks and the carcasses of groups of spires that resembled batches of dried coral. Savashri. Shayla hissed. A wrong move in her descent and she could topple over, careening end over end likely crashing into one of the cactus trees before hitting bottom. Her left foot and leg found a stable ledge against a clump of old trees. Just as the mech stopped, the Jade Falcon Hellbringer above her fired two of its medium lasers. A larger cluster of trees, 30 meters higher on the mountainside, took most of the damage. Fibrous, asparagus-like strands spiraled to either side of her linebacker, accompanied by sprays of thick red liquid. Orkney represented a key world in the corridor to terror for the Jade Falcons. Taking Orkney would imperil the remaining Falcon worlds of Jabuka, Rasselgethi, and Tomans. All prime staging planets for the race to reclaim humanity's birth world. The Falcons were too busy attacking the Lyrans to guard their takings. Such careless strategy, so common among the pigeons, it was laughable. Shayla's star was part of a larger force sent in to take the busiest of Orkney's spaceport cities. Four of them already lay under Clan Wolf's control. New Hampshire was the last. The city rested amid the Crystal Mountain passes, its defences dependent on the planet's natural landscape. Shayla smiled as the enemy's laser fire went wild. In keeping the skidding linebacker in sight, the Hellbringer had reached an unsteady ledge of granite and crystal. The Falcon mech wobbled, almost backpedaling. She watched as it found better footing 50 meters closer to her linebacker, but still 150 meters away. Her grin widened. Orkney belongs to Clan Wolf. Heat encased her in the cockpit of her mech. She reveled in the sensation, cleansing, victorious. Her heads up showed the other members of her team nearby. Serena in her Nova Prime was engaging a Jade Falcon Black Lana. Torin had neatly dispatched an Adder Prime with his Kit Fox Prime. The enemy Adder lay in a smoking heap near the lake below. Some of the cactus trees reached higher than the mechs with rounded tops that resembled giant green mushrooms, each decorated with silver spikes as large as a man's head. The star's battle suits used this on both sides for hide and strike moves. The Hellbringer steadied itself on the treacherous footing, nearly hugging the mountainside. Shayla could not launch her streak SRM-4. She braced the linebacker up on its right elbow just enough to target the Hellbringer. Firing at a target within 150 meters, the missile's accuracy would be sketchy at best. 
a range of 210 metres would be preferable, but ideal situations came rarely in battle. Shayla fired the LRMs from her left torso. Several went wild, as she had expected, but one detonated against the enemy's left leg, throwing the Hellbringer off balance. Fire sizzled around the Hellbringer's leg as it re-evaluated its precarious position. By my hand you die, Freebird, came Warren's voice from the cockpit of his adder. Shaylan nodded at her warrior's work. The enemy Nova Prime came tumbling down the mountainside, losing metal along with mounted weapons and its armor smashed into jutting granite and thick cactus trees. An arm bolted free and struck against the base of a large trunk that clung to the mountainside. Targeting klaxons filled Shayla's cockpit as the Hellbringer fired on her. SRMs flew at her position. One of them hit a nearby wolf battlesuit, sending the suit and its wearer into an airborne pirouette. Another missile struck the rocks, sending granite shrapnel into the linebacker's right side. Shayla heard the clanging of rock on armor as the shards lodged in place. Two of the enemy missiles struck her mech, smashing into the left stabilizing actuator joint of her leg she had just been using to cement her position against the 90 degree Warning. slope. Damage the computer critical. warned Warning. her of imminent joint Damage failure. Critical. She Warning. silenced it with Damage. a slap of her hand. If she lost that joint, she would fall. She refused to end up at the bottom of the mountain. With an eye on her HUD to track the Hellbringer's movements, she scanned the mountainside around her. Her linebacker's left foot was braced against a cactus tree. Her right leg, with its knee bent and foot pressed to the side of the mountain, she had to reverse the stress on each leg without straining the damaged joint. One wrong move and the leg would buckle. A voice came through her neuro helmet speaker, cold and haughty, issuing a bachal. Once again, the Jade Falcons have shown our metal on the battlefield against the unweaned cubs who seek to take what is ours. I will defeat you, Star Commander. In a few seconds, I will send you down the mountain. Surat. Shayla sneered at the Hellbringer through the ferroglass of her cockpit. Beyond it, she could see the movement of battlesuits popping up and down like grasshoppers in a spring field as they engaged their jump jets. Only your arrogance, little pigeon, leads you to believe you have won. A single victory is but a drop in the whole of the mightiest of clans. The wolves own this world. This battle is the last of our victories here, before we scour the Jade Falcon infestation from this corridor of space. It is you who are defeated, Star Commander. Bow to the might of Clan Wolf. His response to her rebuke was to swing around with his remaining medium lasers. As she had anticipated, the Hellbringer's aim was less than accurate. He struck one of the larger nearby cactus trees with a root stalk as thick as her linebacker's ankle. The thick skin split as chunks of it flew in several different directions. Most of it hit Shayla's mech, splattering it with viscous red fluid. Now was her best chance to move. The HUD gave stress points in flowing numbers. She overlaid her internal readout with a look at all systems on her schematic. The left actuator flashed orange. Not yet critical, but close. She had two movements at best before it gave. She needed to create her own cover in case her antagonist realized what she intended and fired again at her leg. Shayla targeted the Falcon mech's right leg, which now stood in the same position as her left and showed damage. She would hit that leg as she made two swift moves, shifting the stress off one of her own damaged joint onto her right leg. She swiveled the rear-mounted small laser. Its sighting limited by her tilted position and targeted the crystalline granite that held bring foot. The laser's initial hit caused the encased air and gas that formed the crystal to explode, sending up spears of shrapnel into the Hellbringer's torso. The laser's heat also melted the crystal, which flattened beneath the enemy mech's supporting foot. She could not afford to hit one of the trees. She had seen a PPC strike to a tree when a Jade Falcon mech fired at it. The tree had shredded into rubbery strips that clung to the crystalline rock like green webbing. The resulting mess had tripped both machines, entangling their limbs and sending them down the mountainside. No, Shayla wanted a clear shot at her target. She wanted to see the pigeon's eyes widen 
when he knew a wolf had claimed her prize. The Hellbringer slid as the crystals turned into molten rock. Shayla slammed down her right foot pedal while pressing her joysticks forward to support her weight, shifting the linebacker's position while maintaining balance. The mech felt sluggish and she gritted her teeth. The horizon dials tilted dangerously to the left towards the drop. She threw all the mech's weight onto the left joint, angled the hip and then moved the right leg down and back. The left knee bent as the huge machine's weight transferred swiftly from left to right. The horizon dials steadied. She powered up both PPCs as she glanced at her heads up to see the Hellbringer. The cactus tree below her right foot gave. Weakened by the Hellbringer's earlier fire, the linebacker lurched backward. Savashri! Shayla threw the joysticks and pedals forward, pushing her mech into the mountainside. If she tipped away from the mountain, her own weight would destroy her. The ploy worked. The linebacker skidded a few meters downward on its belly until the right foot found purchase against the base of another cactus tree. Now she was in front of one instead of behind it. She stopped. Clouds of dust surrounding her cockpit. She heard the plink of rocks as they bounced off the cockpit and shoulders and tumbled to the lake below. She lay on her stomach. Her mech's arms out at its side. Only the harness held her in her couch. It bit into her sternum between her breasts. Orange, red and green lights illuminated her controls. She took several deep breaths before pushing forward with her joysticks, moving the mech out from the mountain on its elbows. The HUD showed both PPC cannon mounts intact and fully charged, but she was in no position to fire them. The Hellbringer was attempting to close the distance between them. Shayla could see the massive mech in the upper right corner of her shield, its fully charged PPCs glowing white. 340 meters lay between her and the Falcon. Every step brought the Hellbringer closer. The Falcon's voice came again, arrogant as ever. Again, I show you the might of the Jade Falcon, little milk cub. Once in range, I will send your mech down the mountain where you belong. Wolves should not dare the lofty heights. They are reserved for the falcons that fly above you. Order your men to surrender. Shayla almost laughed at the demand. This Surat had defeated nothing. She could still see on the HUD the movement of all her mechs. A full roll call. Of her antagonist Star, there remained only four. Star Commander came the stern, deep voice of Joe Sim over the private channel. You look like you could use support, Quaif. You have dispatched your enemy, Quaif? Shayla knew he had. She had seen it on the HUD. Ah. What they were about to do broke Zellbringen. But as a wolf, Shayla knew that at some moment she could honorably accept aid given by other members of her star. The enemy star commander, as inflexible as he was arrogant, did not expect a third combatant. He had no defense prepared against the Alpha Adder's large pulse laser as it melted armor along his left arm and torso. Josim followed up with a spear of fire across the Falcon's path between the Hellbringer and Shayla. She used this distraction to push the linebacker onto its right shoulder until it faced the Hellbringer, which had begun returning fire at the Adder. Along with it, the enraged Falcon sent a stream of curses and insults through the open channel. Rebirth, Surat, your broken Zellbringen! Shayla checked her PPCs, then set her firing reticle over the Hellbringer's chest. Josim's fire had loosened the Hellbringer's position and sent it closer to her. 210 meters. You are right, little pigeon, she said after opening her own channel. Without the mountainside, I would have beaten you fairly in a patrol of equals. But we are not in the realm of fairness. Not with the word of Blake winning on all fronts. Your ineptitude at understanding your enemy once again is your undoing. To invade Lear and space is a waste of power and shows the stupidity of a Clan Jade Falcon. Clan Wolf will take back terror and crush those who stand in our way. She fired without waiting for an answer. Both PPCs engulfed the Hellbringer. The blast forced the mech backwards as lancing arcs of blue and white rippled over its armor. The ground shook as it struck the crystalline terrain and began rolling down the slope. 
It slammed into another thick cactus tree, this one as tall as an adder. The force of the impact cracked the Hellbringer in half. Shayla needed to right her battle mech and check for damage. They still had a barrier to breach, and from the looks of her HUD, three more battle mechs to defeat. Wolfstar Commander. A new voice boomed through her open channel. Shayla tested her linebacker's right foot. The cactus trunk seemed firm enough to support any movement she wished. She bounced once, then pushed back with the right foot from the mountainside. Looking at her HUD, she saw a Jade Falcon Nova Prime approaching from her right, its armor gleaming in the sun, a stark contrast to the green, spiraling forest. She did not bother to respond. Instead, checking her heads up and horizon signals. I am Star Commander Balar, Slayer of Wolves, Steel Vipers and Snow Ravens alike. I challenge the Wolf Cub in the Linebacker Prime to a duel of equals. In this solemn matter, let no one else interfere. Shayla pursed her lips and checked the position of her closest star members. Turin had taken on a Black Lana several hundred meters to her left. Darina had decided to amuse herself by picking off enemy battlesuits, swatting at them like errant bugs, aiming them so they exploded against the cactus trees. Some struck the pointed spindle skewering the armor as well as the soft flesh inside. She switched channels. Josin, keep on point. Half. Shayla checked her diagnostics. Her left actuator could not last long, and she preferred to do mountain battle if her movement was limited. But movement was what they needed, to drive the Jade Falcons backwards inside the city, corral them. Even if she won the battle though, the linebacker would not make it up the mountain, not without jump jets. And even if she had those, the landing would be tricky with a shot leg. She needed a new machine, a jump capable one. Challenge accepted, Shayla said. Terms and conditions? Ah. Uh. With a glance at Joe Sim and a feral grin she knew he could not see, Shayla said, I claim your mech as my prize. There was a pause. Shayla knew she was taking a big risk. The sizes of the mechs were comparable, but not even. On an even field in battle, the Nova Prime would barely have a chance against a linebacker. But here, fighting on a near perpendicular slope against a damaged opponent, the Falcon mech could take her. If so, Shayla could only hope her codex was found intact. She wiped the sweat from her face when the challenger said, Aff. With the Nova Prime schematics pulled up on her computer, Shayla made a quick assessment. She had few LRMs left, and even fewer SRMs. She also saw an error light on her right PPC. Of course, she only needed one to knock her enemy back. But the Nova Prime, though it carried 12 extended range medium lasers, was jump capable. Even in as treacherous a field as this, the jump jets offered a slight advantage. As Challenger, the enemy Nova Prime took the first shot, firing half his medium lasers into the neck and cockpit area of Shayla's linebacker. Heat sinks worked overtime as the red and orange beams burned into armor, seals and gears beneath. Shayla pushed her linebacker up and shifted her left leg to the right of the nearest boulder. Her hood gave a distance of 200 meters. She fired LRMs from her left torso and swiveled the rear mounted small laser to fire at the ground. It struck directly in front of the Nova. Shayla wanted to get close enough to the mech to stop it, but not damage it too much. She targeted one of the larger trees near the Nova, exploding it in a tangle of rubbery strands and blood red fluid that showered the enemy mech. The linebacker moved sluggishly as it drew a little closer to increase the aim on her working PPC. The Nova had started firing medium lasers at Shayla and the cactus webbing draped over its torso and right arm. The shots mostly missed Shayla, though some glanced off her shoulder. The enemy was aiming where the linebacker had been, not where it was now. The HUD read a pulse of energy from the Nova. Star Commander Balar was planning on using jump jets to get airborne above the smoke and plants to see the area. But Shayla had a better idea. If the Nova did not shoot out her cockpit, if she did not misstep, if her actuator held until she was finished. Using her HUD as a guide, Shayla pushed the foot pedals, pressed the joystick forward and reached into the smoke. She counted, 
felt the first vibrations of jets igniting and pushed off from her feet, using the cactus tree trunk as a springboard. Not quite a death from above attack, but close enough. Inside, Shayla slammed forward, caught and held against the couch of the harness. Warnings clanged around her. She heard the crack of ferroglass as her cockpit smashed against the rock. Commander, came Josim's voice. Nova Prime is down. Again, the Wolf Clan reigns supreme. Shayla wiped her forehead, blinking as the stinging, salty sweat coursed down her cheeks. Her internal systems remained online, but her cockpit was dimmed, the light cut by the Nova Prime's feet beneath her. She had done it, landed on top of the enemy mech before it could jump. She hoped she had not damaged it too badly. Wolf Star Commander came Balar's voice, low and flat, as if through gritted teeth. I accept my defeat. Shayla hit her harness release and lowered herself to the cracked ferroglass. She removed her helmet and smiled. Balar could destroy them both by firing his lasers directly into the linebacker holding him down. It depended on the position of the Nova Prime. But perhaps Balar wanted off the side of the mountain as much as she did. Welcome back everyone to another season of Battletopia Stories. Glad you could join me. Let's get some admin out of the way, shall we? If you enjoyed this story, drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a comment. It really helps the channel to grow, plus I really like talking to you guys. If you want to say thanks or help support the channel, you can now drop some change using Ko-Fi, or you can join the Patreon. Links to both are in the comments below. Anything the channel makes goes straight back into the channel, upgrading equipment, buying more sound effects, source materials, etc, etc. Alright, now that's out the way, what did you guys think to this week's story? So it occurred to me the other day when I was reading stories that we haven't actually done any clan v clan action. Hopefully I've now remedied this with two of the most beloved slash hated of the clans, Jade Falcon and Clan Wolf. They're like Marmite, you either love them or hate them. But to follow up on our story, Clan Wolf were 100% successful and they took the planet over within a month by October 3069 and they would go on to conquer the surrounding systems of Jabuka, Rasselgethi and Tomans. They would then hold this cluster of systems for the next 76 years. I don't know what they were doing with them for 76 years. Clanny things. I think the wolves are actually pretty nice on the civilians, aren't they? And generally convert them rather than beat them down and sell them like some of the others. Unfortunately, nothing is known about Star Kappa Alpha after this attack. Uh, we don't find any of the other characters later on in stories yet but you never know what's going to come up in the future, so we'll just keep our eyes open. The major lesson to be learnt here, which the clans did pick up after Tukiad, was don't follow a draconian honour system, because it's going to get you curb stomped. Now, I've just got back into tabletop, and as part of that we're running a clan game, so I had to pick a clan. I picked Clan Goliath Scorpion, because when I was reading the Sana Darnet on them, they seemed awesome, they've got Seekers, they've got SLDF tech and they go out hunting down all the history and everything. They sound amazing. What I didn't realise was on page 273 of Total Warfare there is a nice pretty little chart. This chart tells you the honour status of clans. And if you don't know what that is, let me explain. You can have strict clans, you can have opportunistic clans, and you can have liberal clans. What this means is if you are strict you adhere to the honour code 100%, no breaking it. Opportunistic. You can pick and choose as you like. The liberal? Eh, you tend to stick to most of it. This is exactly what we saw in this story. Clan Wolf are very liberal in their use of Zellbringen and the honor system. My clan? Absolutely 100% stick to it, can't do anything about it. So what we see with the clans is before Tukid, majority of them were very strict. And then after they got beaten by the uh, Freebirth Scum and Comstar, who were always watching, most of them changed to be opportunistic or very liberal. Clan Wolf were liberal to start with, and they just carried it on through. And as we saw, they had a target, and they just battered their way down to it. No problem whatsoever. Oh, oh, here's the other thing. So Clan Wolf never made it to Terra, nor did Clan Jade Falcon. What we had was Terra was owned, ran by Comstar, word of Blake, the Republic of the Sphere, the Republic of the Sphere and the Wolf Empire, and then later on just the Wolf Empire. 
But the wolf empire itself is a really big, tricky beastie, which it's a tale for a different time, but I think it'll be fantastic. So that's us done for another week. Don't forget to check out Dream Made Productions by my buddy Adam. Till next time, everyone, stay safe. I'm Shrapnel. Bye.